This is Christy Waldrop, National Education Coordinator for Jedi International. Today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be cutting seamless layers. It's what I call kind of secret layers. They're, you kind of look at the haircut and you can't tell whether there's layers there or not until the hair is actually moved and or curled. It releases a lot of weight. However, if they're wearing their hair straight, it's going to give a much more seamless appearance. Right now, it's pretty much all one length with lots of shattering and scattered ends. We want to have more firmness through those ends so that she has more control. Instead of the hair moving like this, it will move like this. And it'll have a lot more fluidity, more manageability, and more volume. So let's go ahead and get her shampooed and then we will start in the back. I want to get rid of these shattered and just very broken, brittle ends that she has, possibly from a little bit too much flat ironing and or just the length of her hair as well as old highlights. We want it to be a little bit more crisp and a little bit more clean and lay down better. And once again, we're getting this movement as opposed to this movement. We want it to flow into that S formation. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it up the length to about here. And by doing that, we'll get rid of this V and the broken shattered ends of that last two inches. So I'm going to go ahead and section her off and we'll get started. Alright, now we have her nice and sectioned off. I went ahead and sectioned her from the high point of the head to the high point of the ear. And then we have it sectioned down the center to the high point of the occipital bone, back to the ear base. Section everything into diagonal lines so that it leaves a much softer edge on the hair, even though we're cutting it blunt straight across. So, what we're going to do now, we're going to go ahead and go in take off the length because we want to get rid of these shattered ends and firm up the overall foundation of her haircut. The Flexion is very much like our Plier razor. However, it has our feather styling razor blade in there. The Plier is more like this. It's our straight blade and this one has the guard. However, it's a removable guard. And then you can have a straight razor blade if you'd like. In our Bob haircut, in the next version of our haircuts, we're going to be using the Plier. However, today we're going to be using the Flexion. To start out with, we're going to go ahead and make sure that we have plenty of blade glide on this haircut. Dry hair tends to not cut as well with the razor, and it can rip and tear it no matter what the angle is. When we're using this razor, we want to make sure that we use all parts of the razor, especially since you're changing it on a regular basis, generally within every haircut. When you're moving from center to left, you're going to use the back of the blade. When you're moving from center to right, we're going to use the tip of the blade. Anywhere on the interior part of the haircut, you're going to use pretty much the interior part of the razor. I have about an inch and a half subsection. With the density of her hair, it works really nicely. She and I established a specific length earlier before we started cutting. I'm using a fairly tight wrist to shape through the haircut and to give it a nice straight edge. We find our guide using the back of the razor from center to left. It's always a good idea to stay in front of your work just so we make sure that we have a good strong line. 
The great part about the Flexion is that I'm able to touch my fingers, unlike the Plier. Getting a good straight, smooth line. Next section. For those of y'all that are looking to move up and to graduate into the Plier razor, this is a nice way to learn how to start using it without the possible nips and scrapes that come with a straight razor. Once again, more blade glide. Her hair dries really quickly, so we're gonna go in. I like the blade glide because it helps to keep the moisture in the hair. I'm not usually real big on cutting solutions, however, this one does not interfere with product or get sticky or goopy, I guess is a good technical term, but it stays nice and clean and true throughout the haircut. I'm using the back of my blade and going through and cutting the hair. When I'm doing that, I'm holding it like this. It's just barely on the back of the blade, however, it's also parallel to that hair section. The tighter your wrist is, the tighter your edge will be. Just getting rid of all of those ends that don't want to behave. If you notice, now she has no layers whatsoever. We took out the U section and all the straggled ends that she had and we gave her a nice firm foundation, comb the hair straight down at zero degree, and then we bring it back over the shoulder. So that when we cut this, it will be the same length in the front as it is in the back. Continuing with the same foundation cut that we did before, back of the blade moving from center to left. And then we're gonna use the front of the blade we're moving from center to right. So now we've gone from lots of layers through the foundation of her cut to no layers. We're gonna apply some new seamless layers in there now. Going to use the fine end of your comb, place it into the hair area at the same angle as the hair is sectioned, and then we're going to lift. What you'll notice is that it's a very imperfect underneath subsection. That's okay, perfectionists out there. We're going to go in, comb that area out, find where the thick areas and the finer areas of the hair are, and we're going to take a V subsection. Once the razor grabs, we're going to go in also again from the thick areas and the thin areas of the hair, from the center or the midsection as opposed to from much shorter area or from down here. If you remove weight from the ends, you don't have a lot of longevity within the haircut. You can actually see right now how the hair is starting to bevel. It has more movement already just from doing that little bitty bit of weight release that we just did. I don't want to take out too much weight, so we're going to skip this subsection, which is three quarters of an inch. I'm going to go in and go to the next subsection. If you put too many layers in the foundation of the haircut, what's going to happen is it's going to collapse the style. She's going to have more wispy stringer ends like she did when we first started. And the whole reason that we cut off six inches of her hair, it was because of those stringy ends. Now, the higher up I get, the deeper I get. Look at the difference in how it cut now that the hair is wet. Go in here, remove weight. This is where it gets a little scary. We're gonna go in heavier handed now than ever before. I'm really letting the razor 
cut through the hair. She has a lot of hair and that's okay to remove that much weight. Remember, we are creating the layers for her. We have to be cautious not to make chunks. We want smooth, fluid lines that are going to go all the way from midsection all the way out to the ends. The way that your fingerprints swirl and move and shape is the exact same way that the hair grows out of the head. So we have to be very conscious of that and make sure that we're working with that as opposed to against. Most of our clients want their hair to be easy. This helps to give it longevity. By removing weight and also softening out the overall movement of the hair and giving it fluidity. See the difference in the way the hair moves? You can already see it starting to do this instead of doing this like it did before. Right here, you can see that density. We're gonna go in, place the razor, and I'm gonna pull it out this way. It will remove weight. However, automatically, it's more fluid. Her hairline underneath is very much like Veronica Lake. That's her natural hairline. If we had cut this when it was wet and pulled it straight down, as soon as it was dry naturally, it would have popped up and it would have made an imperfect face frame for her. She still has a lot of density here. However, it has movement now, as opposed to it doing this like it was before. And she has wave, which I bet she never even knew she had. This will be easy for her to get a nice, great, versatile style all right, I think it's time that we go ahead and blow dry her and get her nice and smooth and ready to go for the photo shoot. looking, making sure that we have the seamless layers that we originally wanted. See how the hair is now moving like this as opposed to like this? It won't even really do it anymore. It's gotten more fluidity, more movement, as well as more volume. Those V's that we were cutting into, what it helps to do is establish this root system that locks the hair in place. When she wants volume, she'll have it. When she wants layers, she has those too. However, if she doesn't want them, she can just wear it nice and smooth and sleek like she has been, and she has a nice seamless line without seeing a lot of layers. Around the front of the face, the way that we did the weight release and the structured definition, there's not a lot that needs to be done. However, I am seeing a little bit of heaviness here, and we're gonna remove that because the hair is dry, it's not as easy to move the razor through it and it's gonna rip and tear and break the hair. So I'm going in with my shears and keeping the blade moving, I am sliding and carving out the section that I want to create the same fluidity and movement and structured um, definition within the hairstyle. This needs to be a little bit more firm. So I'm gonna go in at the face frame. It's at natural fall. I'm able to see where the hair is laying, see what it wants to do, and then if I need to, I will remove more. The faster you channel cut or carve, the less hair you remove. The slower you carve or channel cut, the more hair you remove. Let's firm up her face frame. It doesn't have to be perfect with the other side because it's those idiosyncrasies that's gonna bring out the cheekbone and the hollow of the cheek and her lips and open up the eye area. So we're gonna go right here, remove some weight at a medium pace. In this 
left hand side or the side that doesn't have the extreme part, we find that we don't have as much of our weight release or the structured weight release. So we have to remove a little bit more hair. Now, Miss Kayla, we have volume. We also have fluidity if you want it. And layers without layers. What do you think? I love it. Run your hands through it. See what you think. It's so much lighter than it was. <laughs> you can get your fingers through it now. All right, this is Christy Waldrop with Jatai International, and we look forward to seeing you in the next segment. Have a great day.